there. So at the beginning of this channel, I talked a lot about family documentation. And while I love this content and I'm quite obsessed with it, the algorithms of YouTube don't love it, but there still are some people that really want to learn and grow in the way that they save their family's memories instead of just learning about how they document other people's memories. So today I'm gonna do a little bit of an update, things that I'm doing a little bit differently, some changes that I've made in this part of my life. All right, so let's talk about first things first, the biggest task of the entire year for me, really, I guess, kinda, there's a lot of tasks, but it's my family yearbook. The reason why I do a family yearbook is because the idea of having a baby book for each child, anything that is divided by child is never gonna work. Maybe it works for you, it's never gonna work for me. My commitment for the family documentation side of my life was a family yearbook. It is basically highlights from the year, and I have recognized that um, I, I only put like DSLR at the time, but like nice camera images, real camera images. It's not a book of iPhone photos. Not that I'm opposed to putting iPhone photos in, it's that I had a separate system that was faster for all of my iPhone photos. And I wanted this book to have, I just wanted it to feel well composed and artistic. I didn't want like, kind of not so great snapshots from my iPhone in this beautiful family album. However, there's a few things that I have changed with this setup. One, I am taking less photos. And those of you who have multiple children are like, Caitlin, we could have told you this was gonna happen. And when I say taking less photos, I mean taking like a couple hundred a month instead of a couple thousand. And for some of you, that's like, oh my gosh, what are you taking photos of? But I used to like, take photos every week of my kids just doing life around the house. And now I take photos of them. Like this morning, kids were getting ready for preschool. I realized our two boys that are like 19 months apart, they were wearing kind of cute outfits and they were in a good mood. And I said, okay, if you want your vitamin gummies, get over to the wall and hold hands and smile. And they did, and it was so cute. And I don't have really updated photos of them as brothers. So I got that, that's gonna be a spread in the album. But I probably won't do that again until maybe one time next week, maybe in two weeks, I don't know. I photograph family events, but if it's a active, mobile, kind of crazy family event, I'm not taking my camera. The more kids we have, the more I'm realizing I am getting a more, more selective on where I take my camera. I always take it to the lake. I always take it on the boat. I don't care. It's insured. Like I, I do take it most places that people would be like, oh, no way. And I find a lot of joy in that. That has not changed, but I have found that there have been some moments this past year where I'm like, you know what? If we went to Disney or if we did a big, a Great Wolf Lodge, for example, I'm not taking my DSLR into the water park, but the light in there is actually beautiful and it's glowy and I love it. Um, and I took really great iPhone photos in there. And so I will probably, and that was a huge, big family memory trip for us. Kids were perfect ages this year those iPhone photos probably need to go into the family album to document that we did that together. So it changes that I am taking some select moments of our year, normally trips or really big special events where my big camera did not come out and I am including a spread with iPhone photos, which I said I would never do. But I'm just learning you just never say never when you are growing a family with so many little kids. But one big change for me this year, uh, there is nothing that holds me accountable more than having a newborn. I am incredibly dedicated to taking month, month by month photos. I have these frames upstairs that are from Pottery Barn. I get questions about them all the time. It has a picture of the kid as, as a one year old, but then it has a month by month picture. They're not in the same outfit. They are not in the same place. It's just one good monthly portrait to document how they changed their first year of life. And I've done that with all three of them. I definitely wanna do it with this little guy in here. And that means that normally I can get a blog post out and I can edit month by month the images that I have. And that accountability, even though I got a little delayed with Rhett, if you go on my blog, he still has 12 blog posts. Every single one of my children have 12 blog posts. This one will be no different, but that means I was editing my family photos month by month. It's amazing. When I don't have a first year of life for a child, I'm finding I don't have any more motivation to get my monthly edits done. So they're kind of like quarterly edits. And um, I use airplane time for these because I don't need to have internet that's fast. I use some trips, like Michael and I just went on a baby moon and I edited a whole quarter of a year, came home. I love that my family photos were updated from the summer. And, um, and so editing quarter by quarter instead of month by month is a change, but it works just fine. And I think the reason I'm sharing that is because if you're a parent and you're like, 
oh, I'm so behind. I give up. Don't give up. Just readjust your expectations. I'm still going to get them edited and maybe my family album won't be ordered January 1st. It might be ordered in March or April for 2022 because I'm having a baby in February and I have grace for that. And this is another thing to think about. Think about what you value and not so much what is culturally or socially, like just the norm. So I don't value baby books, but I do value letters that my mom wrote me like when I went to camp or things that she would send me at college or notes where my mom would write a little bit and my dad would for birthday cards. Like those notes from my parents now as an adult, I look back and I think that seemed like a sweet thing. But now that I'm an adult, I'm like, that was That was meaningful to me. And so what we decided to do for our kids, instead of the whole baby book thing, we have invested in promptly journals and promptly journals are basically the first year is a little bit intense because it's monthly, but that's because you want to save and document like, okay, this is when you walked and this is when you started talking and this is when you started to get your own voice. And that's really cute. But what I love is once they hit one year old, it's a one-time entry And there's a space where Michael and I both write letters to each of our children on their birthday week. So um, Evie, you know, has five letters from us that we write every year and we are encouraging her. We're sharing what we're proud of. And I think what we've realized recently, I think she's old enough to where we want to start reading these to her. I don't know if Michael's going to love that. I'm sure he would. He's fine with that. But I think it would be really sweet to on her birthday or like the night of her birthday to read letters to her. So, uh, so there's one picture a year, just one picture of what they look like at five, what they look like at six. And then we write her a letter. And then throughout the year, when I think about it, and it's it's literally once every other month or something, I will sit down and I'll, and I'll sit next to Michael on the couch and I'll say, okay, what are the crazy things Rhett's doing? One of the crazy things, um, Graham, Graham is in a phase where he'll say, well, actually, and he's only three. And so it's hilarious. So I write, I take little snippets of what they're doing that is so precious that I don't want to forget. And I just write it in the margins. And so there's just this jam packed, imperfect book with, with scribbles and all things, but it's just mom saving parts of her, each of her children's lives. And I love it. There's also books, um, that are focused on adoption stories and for parents, adoptive parents. Um, there's just a lot of really sweet options. Promptly is a great company and we love supporting them. So I have four of them, four Promptly journals by my bed. And I just add to it as I see things changing in my kids, things I want to remember about my kids. So that is, is it photo related? No, but it's family documenting from a different angle. And it's important to me because I think that it alleviated a lot of, um, and some people would look, listen to this and be like, that's so much pressure. And you're right. Maybe for you it is. But for me, being having a system is what really allows me to have a lot of peace about knowing, you know, I know what I want to do for my family and I'm not even tempted by other ideas. All right. So another part of family documentation that I love, I love walking into people's homes. I remember this as a teenager. I went to someone's house to babysit. I literally did this like once. I was not a babysitter in high school. Uh, And I remember seeing just family photos throughout their house. And, and, you know, it's pictures of mom kissing the baby and they're just so sweet. I'm like, that is, I want my house one day to be full of visual reminders that my kids are loved. And so um, I'm a photographer, so that's easy. I'm already taking the photos, but I want to, I want my kids to see the photos. So we have a gallery wall going down both sets of our stairs, just with Ikea frames because they're cheap and they come in all massive sizes. So the key to having family photos around your house constantly updated, in my opinion, you may not agree, is being able to print them yourself. So I bought a camera, maybe it was my Mark IV back in the day, and it came free with like this $800 um, professional grade printer from Canon. And I remember thinking, "Mm, I'm not going to use that. And I used it so much. I mean, I print all my own photos now and the color is so accurate, like more accurate, I think, than even printing from a lab. So I love this because when I get on a roll, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to I'm going to update our, our stairwell and I can just print them in Michael's office. And I have like have a little cutter, like a little, you know, cut the edges off. And it's so easy. The reason why I think a lot of people don't update their framed photos around the house is because you have to think about it and order them. And that's a process. And for me, I'm just like, oh, I'll, I'll replace that. I'll download it and just print it out on high quality photo paper with my Canon Pixma Pro. 
200. How is this a part of family, family documentation? Well, I think as photographers, sometimes you, you got to pick and choose what brings you joy. You know, I probably update these frames once, twice a year, uh, but it's easy for me because I have the resources just to do it at home. Maybe for you, you're like, I could care less about that, but I love the promptly journal idea. I, um, if you go down our steps to the basement, the walls are completely beat up and destroyed, but the photos that come from the top staircase, like when you go up our main floor, like to the kids' bedrooms, when those photos are older, I have a hard time just like putting them in storage. I want them to still be on display. So I just keep ordering more Ikea frames and adding them to the basement walls. It's almost like they get a downgrade. So you get removed from the main staircase and you get put in the basement. But our kids go to the basement every day and they're reminded and they see visual reminders that they are loved and that they have great community and, and people that care about them and that our family loves each other visual representation everywhere. And I love that. So something you should know about having this printer is that I normally replace the ink about once a year and it's $110 for all the eight different cartridges and then $21 individual cartridges in case you need to buy just one replacement. And then the paper, we use a high quality photo plus, it's like a semi-gloss paper from Canon and for 50 sheets, it's like $80. So it is, that is expensive, but you got to imagine if you printed even with your discount, you know, 50 11 by 14s plus some four by sixes that can maybe fit on the ends, you're going to run up a big bill either way. I like this process because I can do it instantly. And I like it because it allows me to feel like if I am in the mood and have the space to get it done, I just get it done. I don't have to order it. And then it sits on my, every time I order prints, in the past, it sits on my counter and I don't even get them in frames for like six months. Maybe that's my own personal problem. But so that's why I love having a professional photo printer at home. And the quality is just, it makes me appreciate my family photos so much more when they're printed. I just printed some last night or uh, two nights ago. And, um, and I took them into Michael who's sitting in the living room like, look at our kids. They're so cute. It's like they're cuter when they're printed on paper. Okay, so moving on to another part of family documentation, the one second a day app. Now. I don't feel like I have a really good handle on family video, but if you're be, if we're being honest, kids are more engaged and love reliving past memories through video these days than they do photos. And I get that. Like it is fun to watch past. And I like doing real family reels on Instagram that I can, you know, look at, even though half the audio gets taken out of them later. It's so annoying, but there is, Something that happened recently that made me really appreciate this one app that I have used for five years. It's called the One Second A Day app. And it used to truly be one second a day. And you just saved really one quick, you know, to show you what we, what you were doing for that day. It's a little annoying to go back five years ago to Evie's first year and only see one to two seconds of her life. It's a little too like it's kind of jarring, um, but they have updated the app to where you can add as many clips per day that you want for the most part, and they can be up to 10 seconds long. And 10 seconds is a great length of time because if there's something funny that was said or an interaction, it's enough time to be able to watch a clip and see like the funny part and then enjoy it, laugh, and then it goes to another clip. Oh, it's dope. Cute. Princess Leia hair. Armor, hi! Hi! <laughs> so it means that my family, I do every year, I export the full year, and it's the best, the funniest, most entertaining, sweetest clips of our family's life every year. They are currently almost two hours long because <laughs> I'm I'm saving, I'm just saving so much. But think about um your parents' VHS tapes. So my mom has all these VHS tapes and there's a few like key VHS tapes that she captured like really hilarious stuff. And I feel like the amount of hilarious stuff that my mom captured in a year <laughs> is what I capture like three days of our kids. And so instead of watching through three hours of like 1995 birthday party and picnic in the backyard, you know, family reunion to find those clips. I, it, what's cool is that my children have some of their best memories from an entire year exported out of this app. And I just store it on a, a Vimeo. We have a Vimeo account for the business. So I store it online, but you could store it anywhere you want. Last but not least, 
iPhone photos, how, what am I doing with those things? I'm still favoriting them and I just pay attention to favorites and I try to do that at the end of every day. Um, so that I have a full, I'm not looking at the thousands upon thousands, I'm looking at the best of the best. The goal is to make chat books from them based on a family Instagram account. I made that account private just for the sake of there's so many people that wanted to follow it and 11,000 people is enough, I think, uh, to see pictures of our kids. It was really a great way to share more photos and aunts and great aunts and like people could see. But honestly, you know, I share a lot of our kids. And so I've just had thoughts about like, I think there might be a better way to do that. People ask me all the time, are you still doing all those chat book things? I have so many chat books. And basically it's an automatic system that's linked to my Instagram account, prints a book every 60 photos. The reason I love it is because in my yearbooks, I don't write anything in them. You know, I don't write notes of, oh, this is something funny that happened. In chat books, anything I put in the caption is like, you know, something that just tra transfers over to the book. And so it's fun to read them and it's fun to relive that way. But I am behind on them. And part of that is because I don't feel super motivated to put more of my kids on the internet more than they already are. Um, and so I, yeah, I think I might just go the route of batch editing the same way that I do for the family yearbook, just um, pulling them over to, it's also so much faster just to airdrop them to my computer, batch edit them real quick in Lightroom, just with some quick brightening. Cause I have printed some chat books where I didn't edit them at all and they print way too dark. So it's a lot easier, I think a lot faster just to batch edit them, export them, send them back to my phone and just post them. But it would be even better if I just put them in an album on my iPhone, which automatically links to chat books and just updated it itself. Problem is you'd have to go back and manually add captions if you want to. So I'm still figuring out if that system is a, is adapting. I'm not going to let go of the chat books idea altogether because then that would mean that my iPhone photos would just go into the family yearbook. And that is a possibility, I guess, in the future, but it still seems easier and more streamlined for me to just favorite my photos and have them automatically printing in a chat book as life goes on. So still figuring that out. The update on the iPhone photos, saving and printing those, it's still work in progress, but it's next on my list after the family yearbook gets done. I, I hope in general that no matter what you want to do with your family documentation, you may not want to do a yearbook and promptly journals and a one second a day app. That might be like, oh gosh, way too much. But maybe there's just one idea or one concept that you want to try moving forward. If you think to yourself, oh, I'm just so behind, I'll never catch up. Start where you are. Start this month. And don't think about what you've missed, just move forward. Because if you if you keep looking backwards and saying, well, I can't keep up, then you're not gonna make any changes moving forward because you're just stuck with what you haven't done. So just start today and say, I'm just starting. My child's seven years old, I'm starting to document from seven years old forward, I wanna document life more strategically. So if you love this and enjoy this, there is a playlist with this type of information that may be helpful. I hope you enjoyed it, got some tips, and I will see you next time. Bye. Ah!